Hi there, we're so delighted to introduce to you our free church app. Uh, this app is loaded with features and resources that will greatly enrich your life. So head out to the app or Google Play stores, search for All People's Church Bangalore and download the app right now. It's going to greatly enrich your journey with God. It's a combination of choices and collective voices. For me, it started as a little kid with the first word uttered, Mama. My words began to take shape. I grew, my world grew, my words grew. Chit chat, lines, lyrics, tweets. Aw, that's so sweet. Words began to make me, my world of words began to break me. Sisters, parents, exes, spouse kept assuring me. That's pointless, that's useless, that's hopeless. I... I'm worthless. The boss says it best. It's not personal, it's just business. But that's not true. Not true. Worthless? I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am a royal diadem in his hand. I am precious in his sight. For he knows the plans he has for me. Plans to perfect me. Words. 
It's a combination of choices and collective voices. It has the power of life and death. Greetings and thank you so much for tuning in to Living Strong Today. Uh, thank you for being with us on these telecasts and uh, giving us the opportunity to come your way and spend this time with you in the Word of God and also in prayer. Uh, over the last few weeks, we've been talking about the importance of our words, um, the power of our words, and uh, God's design concerning how we use our words correctly. Uh, helping us understand uh, the importance of words and looking at it from different perspectives, different angles in the Word of God. In continuing on that theme, I want to bring our attention to the fact that faith is also released and faith is expressed through words. One of the ways, I'm not saying exclusively the only way, but one of the ways in which we express faith in God and in which we release faith in God is by the words we speak. The Lord Jesus himself taught us this. Uh, in Matthew, the 17th chapter, uh, there was a situation when uh, uh, the disciples of Jesus couldn't cast out a demon, an evil spirit, uh, out of a young, young man. And uh, after the Lord Jesus dealt with that situation, uh, they came to Jesus, the disciples came to Jesus and asked him and saying, you know, Lord, why could we not cast it out? And he pointed to unbelief as the reason they couldn't do it. And in that, he, saw, he said this in Matthew 17 and verse 20, he said, Because of your unbelief, for where assuredly I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible to you. So Jesus was using that situation to teach them on how faith is exercised. He said, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you can say to the mountain, you will speak to something that is big, something huge, and you will command it to move, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. So he's saying, look, faith has so much potential. Even a mustard seed of faith has the potential to move mountains. Uh, it must, even, the, even in response to a mustard seed of faith, he said, nothing will be impossible to you. You can accomplish anything. But how do you express that? How do you release your faith? He said, if you have faith, you will say, you will release faith with your words, is what Jesus is teaching us. Now, as I said earlier, this is not the only way by which we express or release faith, but it is one of the ways in which the, that the Lord Jesus taught us. He said, if you have faith, you will say. You will release your faith by the words you speak. On another occasion, and I believe the Lord Jesus set this up intentionally in order to teach his disciples about faith. Uh, as they were journeying by the road, um, uh, they passed by a fig tree. Uh, Jesus came to the fig tree expecting or hoping to find some figs on it. And uh, he found he didn't find any. And so, you know, in, in front of all his disciples, he cursed the fig tree. Uh, and uh, he may have said something like, you know, there will a uh, fig tree, you're going to die. There will be no more fruit on you or something. He spoke words to the fig tree. And, uh, you know, his disciples heard him do that. They saw him do that. And they went on their way. We could assume that nothing uh, obvious happened at that moment, you know. You can just imagine maybe they walked about half a kilometer away from the tree and they turned around, looked at the tree, and probably it was there still. Nothing seemed to have changed. And so they just kept walking, not sure, you know, maybe the master was just angry and upset and he spoke something. And now there are all kinds of thoughts could have gone to their mind and we are not sure. We just try to imagine this. But the next day, as they passed by that same road and passed by that same fig tree, the fig tree was dried up. And uh, the disciples saw it and they said, look, master, the fig tree that you curse is dried up. It's withered. It's, it's dead the way you said it would. Now, Jesus, I believe, set this up so that he could teach his disciples something about faith. So he says there in Mark chapter 11 and verse 22, he says, have faith in God. So he's saying, guys, uh, here's something I really want to teach you. You really impressed on what has happened to the fig tree, but I want to teach you something about a, a truth that you need to know. 
He said, have faith in God. And then he says in verse 23, Surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Now let's look at that verse 23 very carefully because that verse is teaching us about how to exercise the faith that we have in God. So verse 22, have faith in God. All right, I have faith in God. I believe God for what he has said. I believe God who, that he will do what he said he would do. I believe the promise of God. I have faith in God. But how do I express that faith? How do I cause that faith that I have in God to work in the natural world? How does my faith in God be released into this realm and cause things to happen in this realm? Verse 23 brings that out for us as given to us by the Lord Jesus. He says, whoever, meaning this is applicable to anybody. It's not just for some people. Whoever, anyone who says to this mountain, so I have faith in God. Now, based on that faith in God and out of that faith in God, I am speaking to something in this natural realm. Uh, as, in, as part of his statement, Jesus said, you're saying to the mountain, you're saying to something big. You're saying to something that's impossible in the natural. In the natural, you can't just move a mountain from one place to the other or get it out into the sea in the natural. So obviously, he's talking about doing something that seems impossible in the natural, but you have faith in God, and this is something that anyone can use. Whoever says to this mountain, and you're giving it a very specific instruction, be removed and be cast into the sea. So you, out of your faith in God, you're speaking to something in this realm and you're telling something very specific to happen. Be removed, be cast into the sea. And you do not doubt in your heart. You don't let any doubt come in. In the mind, of course, you may question, oh, how is this going to happen? Your mind may have questions, but in your heart, you're convinced. Why? Because you have faith in God. You do not doubt in your heart, but you believe that what you say will come to pass. So what do I believe? I have faith in God, and my faith in God helps me believe that what I am saying will come to pass. My faith is anchored in the person of God, and the promise of God, and I am believing that what I am speaking out of that faith will come to pass, but believes that what he says will come to pass, that that mountain will move. That situation will be changed. So what do I believe? I believe that what I'm saying is going to come to pass. Believe that what he says will come to pass. Then Jesus says, he will have whatever he says. I have faith in God, but I'm speaking something. So faith must be spoken. Now faith is released by what I speak, by what I say. And Jesus says, if you do that, believe that what you say will come to pass, you will have whatever you say. So the Lord Jesus Christ has taught us here in Mark 11, verses 22 and verse 23, how to express, how to release faith in God, how to release that into our world, into our realm, so that things can happen, things can change. Notice some things. Obviously, he didn't say, you know, if you have, you have faith in God and then you talk to God about the mountain, you complain to God, God, the mountain is so big, the mountain is stopping my way. It is hindering my progress. He, you know, he didn't say you complain to God about the mountain. No. If you want the mountain moved out of the way, you have faith in God and you speak to the mountain. You tell the mountain to move. So I'm not speaking to God about the mountain, but I am speaking to the mountain because I have faith in God. That's how faith must operate. I have faith in God, but I'm speaking to the mountain. I'm speaking to my circumstance. I'm speaking to something in this natural realm. You can speak to your body, you can speak to your mind, you can speak to your finances, you can speak over your family, you can speak over your children, you can speak over your present, you can speak over your future, anything in this natural realm. You speak to it or you speak over it out of your faith in God. So faith is released by the words we speak. And when you speak those words, Jesus said, don't doubt in your heart, but believe that what you are saying, believe that, that whatever you are speaking, what you're saying will come to pass. You believe 
that those words going out of your mouth, whatever you've declared to happen, will happen. And then Jesus said, you will have whatever you say. Of course, Jesus illustrated this in several situations. And we, will look, we can look at one in Luke, the 8th chapter, uh, verses 22 to 25, of uh, a familiar uh, situation, familiar incident. It says here, Now it happened on a certain day that he got into a boat with his disciples, and he said to them, Let us cross over to the other side of the lake. And they launched out. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. And a windstorm came down on the lake, and they were filling with water and were in jeopardy. And they came to him and woke, awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased, and there was a calm. But he said to them, Where is your faith? And they were afraid and marveled, saying to one another, Who can this be? For he commands even the winds and water, and they obey him. Now you see Jesus demonstrating this power over natural elements uh, through the words he spoke. Jesus rose up and he spoke to the winds. He spoke to the waves. He spoke to things in the natural realm. He commanded what he wanted to say. He, He said, peace be still. Now, The interesting thing is this, that he turns around to his disciples and he asks them the question, where is your faith? Implying that, hey, you could have taken care of this with your faith. He had taught them how to use faith. And now he's questioning them, you know, why didn't you take care of this with your faith? Where is your faith? What what are you doing with your faith? Why aren't you using your faith? Why couldn't you have dealt, taken care of the situation with your faith? Where is your faith? Uh, he had spoken saying, let us go to the other side. He just should have believed that. and said, we are going to the other side. And taken authority over the storms of the wind and spoken to those winds. Spoken to the waves. Commanded them to be at peace. Commanded them to be at still. Just do exactly what Jesus did. And, uh, and asking his disciples that question, where is your faith? We take it that Jesus is telling us that we could do the same thing he did with our faith as well. That we can speak to the winds and the storms and the, and the waves that rise up in our lives and command them to be at peace. Now, you and I know that faith comes by hearing the word. So when I speak words of faith, my faith is built up. That's one part of it. The other part we must also understand is that faith is released in the same way. As you speak words, you're releasing your faith. You're causing your faith to bear upon situations and circumstances in the natural world. As you speak your faith. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 13 through 14, the Apostle Paul says, And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke, We also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. Of course, in this chapter, the Apostle Paul is dealing with all the hardships that we face in life uh, and the ministry. He's saying, you know, we are going through all these challenges in ministry, but I want you to know something. We have the same spirit of faith and therefore we speak. He says, we believe and therefore speak. The, 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 what I want to highlight from these two verses is that when you believe something, you speak it. You express your faith by what you speak. You express your faith by the words you release. So faith, what you believe, you carry having the same spirit of faith. We believe, therefore we speak like this. Therefore we release our faith. We express what we believe by the words of our mouth. So, on the message today, we learn that faith is released and faith is expressed by the words of our mouth. When you believe God, when you have faith in God, you need to release that in this world, in this realm, by speaking words of faith. And you believe that whatever you say will come to pass. And you hold on to that. You don't change those words. You declare, this is what I believe in God for. 
And this is what I am going to say. I speak to impossible situations. I speak words of faith and things will change in the natural. You will have whatever you say. That's the way Jesus taught us to exercise our faith in God, to release our faith into this world and to see things change and to see things happen. Speak your faith. How do you know the Holy Spirit is there? He says, when you all come together, each of you, you're coming with something. You've come with a song, with a psalm, with a tongue, with an interpretation, with a revelation, with a teaching. They're coming with those gifts ready to pour out to one another. When you come to church, you're saying, God, use me today to speak a word to somebody who needs it. Use me today to maybe share something I've learned with somebody. They come like that. Thank you so much for being with us on the program today. Now, before we uh, take some time just to close in prayer, uh, there could be people who've been watching the program and, you know, you're interested in the word, you're interested in what we're saying, but perhaps you've never made a personal decision to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, the greatest message of the Bible is that God loves us. He loves you. And he sent Jesus to die for you and me on the cross, bearing all our sins. He was buried. And the third day he rose up again. And the Bible says that if anyone calls upon the name of the Lord, they will be saved, meaning their sins will be forgiven. They'll be brought out of darkness and they'll be brought into the light of God and they'll be brought into God's kingdom and God will make them a brand new creation. It's possible that there could be some of you watching or listening that you feel in your heart, I need this. I need to be saved. I need to have my sins forgiven. I need to come into God's kingdom. I need to become a child of God. And you feel that in your heart. And I want to lead you in a simple prayer. As you call upon the name of the Lord, the Bible says you will be saved right where you are. If you've never done this before in your life, if you've never prayed and called upon the name of Jesus, I want you to do this right now with me. Just pray this prayer with me and ask Jesus to become your Lord and your Savior. And he will do that right now. Let's pray together. Say this with me. Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my life. Forgive my sins. I receive you as my Lord and as my Savior. I believe you died for my sins, that you rose up again, that you're alive today. Make me a new person. Make me a child of God. and Help me to follow you the rest of my life. Thank you for doing this for me. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And Father, I also pray for each one watching, God. I pray for a release of your power. I pray for a release of your healings, your miracles. I release the power of God to break off sickness, disease, infirmity. I break off every spirit of depression and hopelessness. I release the joy of the Lord. Holy Spirit, touch each person release a miracle in their lives to meet their needs. I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us on the telecast today. And until next time, remember, live life the Jesus way. It's been our privilege to be able to bring God's word to you through these telecasts on television. Uh, in addition to the uh, television programming, All People's Church uh, reaches out across our land through free publications where thousands of books are given out, especially to pastors and people in remote areas and towns where they do not have access uh, to Christian bookstores. Uh, we also hold uh, Christian leaders' conferences and youth conferences uh, for people who do not uh, have access to these uh, teachings. Uh, we also conduct short-term Bible colleges in different parts of the country, training and equipping uh, people for uh, ministry and work of God's kingdom. For all of these, of course, we need money, and uh, therefore we would like to just open up this invitation to you. 
If you would like to partner with us, either in our television programs, our publications, our conferences, our training and equipping of pastors and leaders, and also in church planting in areas across this land, feel free to do as the Lord leads and to contribute financially towards the work that all people's church is doing across India. We invite you to visit our church website apcwo.org where we have several free resources like mp3 sermons, sermon notes and publications that you can download and use. You can also call or email us to request a free copy of our publications. And please feel free to share your feedback and do share your prayer requests when you contact us.